Hey guys. Today's video is going to be a weekly plant shop routine. What I do each day during the week to maintain and run my, um, what's the word? Very casual at home online plant shop that only me and my husband run, but lately it's mostly just me because my husband works. And yeah, so just what I do every day of the week. For a while I was doing restocks and selling plants every single week. Now it's more two times a month because I'm, um, I don't know, just cause. So it's a very casual plant shop, but I hope that you find this helpful if this is, if selling plants is something you wanted to get into. I'm not withholding anything important in this video. So if you have any questions about some of the things I do or use or whatever for my shop, then please leave a comment down below. I'll do my best to respond to every single question I get. Although no promises, it is kind of hard to keep up on the comments sometimes, especially once a period of time has passed. Um, so yeah, any questions leave down there. I'll do what I can to help you out best I can. Before we get into my weekly routine, huge thank you to Mudwater for partnering with me and making this video possible. I'm really happy to be partnering with Mudwater on this video because it is actually genuinely how I start each of my days. Through this video each day, just know I'm drinking my mug of Mudwater in the morning before I get going on all of the work I have to get done throughout the day. Something I was noticing with coffee is it was leaving me kind of jittery and anxious. But once I made the switch to Mudwater, I genuinely have felt such a huge huge difference. And how I drink my mud water literally every single morning is I just add a tablespoon to a hot cup of water. And then I like to add a little bit of honey just to make it slightly sweet. Well, sometimes a little more, a little more honey to make it more sweet, depending on the day, you know, leaves me feeling really great. So basically mud water is a coffee alternative with four adaptogenic mushrooms and Ayurvedic herbs. The ingredients they use in mud water are 100% USDA certified organic, non-GMO, gluten-free and vegan, as well as being kosher and Whole30, which is quite the list. That's an accomplishment. A few of the ingredients that they use, just an example, are cacao, lion's mane, chai, a whole bunch of other awesome ones as well. The starter kit comes with like a little pamphlet that tells you all of the ingredients and kind of some of their benefits. Some of the benefits that stand out to me are increased focus, which is the number one thing I have noticed as a result of drinking mud water first thing in the mornings. It also can aid your immune system. Not only that, but their tins are recyclable and they donate monthly to reforestation efforts to ensure that they have a net positive carbon footprint. If you'd like to give it a go, you can get 15% off their starter kit by using my link down in the description box and using my code HarleyG2. And again, that is for 15% off their starter kit. So it really is worth a shot, you guys. I highly recommend it. Again, that information will be down in the description box as well as pinned to the top of the comments. Try it try it. Anyway, with all that being said, let's get into my weekly plant shop routine. Let's go. It's Tuesday. It's been a day. On Tuesdays, the things I do for the shop, go around and check every single box, add a little bit of liquid or water if anything is thirsty or the humidity is a little bit low. Check up on the plants, make sure everything's okay. And then as I'm doing that, I'll go ahead and pick plants for the coming Friday's restock. Yeah, let me show you where I put the plants. Right here, this yellow thing is a lid from a moving tote. And that's where I actually put all of the plants so that they're easy to move around and I can add water to the bottom of it and water the plants like through the week. I'll usually just, I mean, you can see there's a little bit of water at the bottom already. I'll add a little bit of water so that nothing dries out too much before I'm able to get them photographed and posted on the site and then shipped out, you know? These are all plants that I haven't done a restock in the last couple of weeks, but as I've been going through the plants that are like super, super well-rooted, I've just been pulling out. So these are ones I've already picked since I've been working in here, but not doing restocks, okay? So those plants are all ready. Just line them up and I do try to fill up this tray every week, although it doesn't always happen because, you know, it does depend quite a bit on the plants themselves and if they are ready to go. If they're not ready to go, I don't have plants. And sometimes they take a lot longer to root than I think they will which is super frustrating. Okay, let's go pick some plants and take care of some plants. I do always start with the small boxes. I should logically start with the large ones because by the time I get to those, I'm just exhausted and they feel like so much to move. I am super, super pregnant. This baby's coming any day now, so. <laughs> 
It's a task to move these. I just go over to the bins, pull a couple bins off the shelf and check the boxes for anything that's ready to go or that I'm emotionally ready to part with because actually I have to be honest, a lot of the plants in this room are like good. Like I could definitely, you know, sell them. The problem is I am emotionally attached to them because I have been taking care of them for, you know, months. I started them from cuttings from my own plants. And now that, you know, it's time for them to go, it's like, it's like, I know you, I know who you are. I don't, I'm not ready to say goodbye, you beautiful little plant. So this one is a little bit dry. So I'm just gonna add a little liquid in here. And that is it. Okay. And then on to the next box. It really is kind of a, I mean, it's not boring. I really enjoy doing it. There's like not a lot to it. So this might be kind of a boring video. And what I'm looking for are roots wrapped around the bottom and or new growth, preferably and new growth. This one's a little dry too. What the heck? They're all drying out. Usually only like a couple of them need water. All right, so I pulled out the plants that were ready. Now on to the next box. Oh, and a crucial step to these um, Tuesdays is getting into your most comfy outfit possible because it is kind of a laborious, it's the most laborious task out of all of them because it's a lot of just going back and forth, squatting down, standing up, picking up boxes, which maybe when I'm not pregnant won't be as much effort, but right now it just feels like a lot of freaking effort. <laughs> so I don't think anything in here. Oh, this is a little cutie, a little Hoya Abovada. It's kind of rooting weird. I don't know why sometimes the Hoya plants, the roots like grow up and not down. Please just grow into the cup, sir. <sighs> None of these ones. Oh, this one's cute. Now nah, those ones aren't ready. I'm not trying to force them. So every once in a while, I'll go check a box that has been doing fine. And then out of nowhere, all of the plants will be dead. Um, and this one, not all of them are, but oh my gosh, I'm so frustrated. Well, pretty much all of the Hoya Bellas are like this. Um, so I'm just gonna set all of the bad plants aside that are definitely not going to make it. That is so weird. Cause like, it's okay, it's extra weird cause sometimes they'll be like, They'll be doing okay, and then just out of nowhere, they don't. I don't know. So yeah, out of that whole box, this is all we have that's like, good. Oh, that sucks. It is what it is, you know? Can't always control it. I mean, I probably, I definitely did something wrong in that box where there's so many. Usually there's just like one or two that are like that. Where there were so many, it definitely was something I did. <laughs> Oh, stupid, stupid, stupid. So something else that I do when I'm going through these boxes, again, I like to do maintenance stuff. So any maintenance. Um, so like this Hoya Burt propagation, it's now rooted, but occasionally once a Hoya Burt roots, um, some leaves will die off like this, even though the rest of the plant is fine. And yeah, so I'll just pull off those leaves. I mean, this is an example of one that I'm just gonna toss because most of the leaves are gone at this point, but like where there's just one leaf, actually, that's not even a sad one. That's just a weird colored one. Um, I'll just pull off any bad leaves and hope that the plant doesn't continue doing whatever it's doing. <laughs> Sometimes it does, and that's just the way it is. I will be honest, I've been a little more neglectful lately over these plants just because I have been kind of overwhelmed i'm sure you guys can tell by the quality of my videos we don't have to get into that right now but <laughs> but fortunately that's the good thing about prop boxes um it makes it really easy and like yeah i'm neglecting these but for how long i've been for how much i've been neglecting these i really like they're doing pretty well still like most of the boxes so you know that's good yeah, these ones are kind of a, this is a newer box I've done more recently. So yeah, I'm not surprised they're not doing that great. I am running out of room in this, this room. So we're going to be moving all of these bins down to my grow tent just to keep it all consolidated. And so I'm not having to run like up and stairs as much as I have been lately. Um, especially with the new baby, I just don't, I don't think running up and down the stairs is going to be as uh, realistic. So yeah, we're going to be moving them more 
all together. So these will be going into my grow tent. Hopefully by, hopefully tomorrow, honestly. Hopefully by the end of the week, I have all of these down there. Ooh, this is an exciting box. Add a little bit of water, not too much. This is my variegated um, philodendron, philodendron heteraceum box. And they're growing really well. Look at this one. I've been meaning to sell this one, but again, this is one that I'm like emotionally attached to. Actually, I could sell most of these right now. And they're ready. They would definitely sell, but I'm just, I, I can't say goodbye, especially variegated plants. Like, look at how beautiful that is. I'm so attached to it. Hmm. So I just have to like mentally prepare myself to say goodbye. I don't think I'm going to sell any of these right now. I like really can't do it. I can't. I love them too much. They're all so beautiful, you know, and they were all literally like how this is a node. Okay, I need to water this. Maybe you'll be able to see it better once I add some water. Um, okay, do you see that now? The node right here? It's kind of poking up. That's weird. I need to, oh, I need to put it in the moss a little bit better. That's what they all started out as, okay? This is just a new cut I took last week from another plant, but they all started out like that, and then they end up, then they do this, and then they turn into this, and then I get attached, and I can't say goodbye, so <laughs> it is a vicious cycle. Why am I like this? Why am I like this? I grow them to sell and then I just can't do it. Oh, I gotta go fill up my liquider. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to fill up this jug like five or six times today. <laughs> Oops, I just knocked you over with my booty. Okay, so these big boxes are quite a bit more annoying. I will be honest with you, because I have to, um, you know, like, take them off, off from one another. So I have to, like, I don't know what I'm trying to say, but they're just a lot more annoying. Oh my gosh, look at how good all these Syngonium are. These are actually small boxes, as you can see with your eyeballs. Um, but look at how good. These are Syngonium Botic. Botic. Um, yeah, they look really good. I'm going to wait longer for them to get a little bit bigger before I add them to the shop. I don't like to wait for plants to get too much bigger because then they're a pain to package. And I don't know, I find that the small, I find that smaller plants typically do better like through shipping and then also acclimating to a new home environment. So yeah, oh my gosh, these are Syngonium confetti. Also look really good. Yay! They're looking so good. I love when I do like the whole node thing and the plants just come in like perfect. Yay, I'm excited. <sighs> okay, now I'm getting tired, <laughs> but I still have two rows of boxes to go through. Um, these two rows so let's get that done this is all I'm doing today there's nothing else going on in the shop today um, actually that is the last box because that one none of those are ready that is a fresh fresh box so yeah we're done well actually I got to put these back we're done so we went through all the boxes and this is what we have ended up with I didn't end up filling up the tray like I wanted to. That is Tuesday of a day in, or a week in the life of a, a week process of owning a very casual online plant shop where I only do sales like a couple times a month. Uh, see you tomorrow. Wednesday. Let me show you my little setup for what I have going on today. So over here, we are just in my living room. Here I have our plants, my phone and Sharpie and my light. So basically what I'm gonna do is number a, number a cup, take a photo of it, and just repeat that process until I've taken photos of each individual plant. Not hard at all. Okay, let's do this. I've gotta be honest, I'm super tired, so I'm gonna try and get through this as fast as possible. I need to get another tray. Once the, the cup has been numbered and photographed, then I'm going to put it in the tote just to keep it organized. Plant number one. I do just try to put it like on the side 
that the plant will photograph the best. So I'm going to put it on this side because otherwise the photograph will be of the back of the plant. This is a Hoya sigillatus. And I'm just gonna start at one, cool. And then take the picture. I forget every single time that the black marker doesn't show up very well. So I'm actually gonna use silver. Normally I actually use a white one, but I can't find my white Sharpie right now, which is a little frustrating. Much better, okay. Of course, like this is much more of a less straightforward way to do this. Like I could definitely do like a plant listing for a Hoya Camposportianum and then sell like 15 plants under that listing. I personally like to know exactly what plant I'm buying, you know? I don't know, I just, I get attached to specific plants, so that's why I like to do it this way. But it is definitely a lot more time consuming, which is why like my plants, I don't know. I don't know, plant prices are weird, you know? Like obviously we want them, we want them as inexpensive as possible, but also it's a lot of work, like this whole process. Um, so I don't know, like I feel it's worth going, doing it this way, but I do have to charge like a little bit more. I'll be totally honest just because it is so much more work, but let me know what you think. Like would, do you prefer paying a little bit more, but getting, knowing exactly what plant you're going to get, or do you not really care if you know exactly what plant you're going to get? Wow. Okay. So <laughs> I picked exactly 70 plants, which that was not intentional. I like to stay around the 70 mark. That seems to be what Ryan and I can handle on our own for right now. Hopefully one day we'll be able to do more, but yeah, this is the last plant and it's number 70. That's perfect. All right, so that's that. I got all the pictures done. Now I got to clean up my mess. Okay, it's actually Friday now. I just went to upload my Thursday footage and realized that something happened to my Thursday footage. I have no idea if I like didn't hit record or I don't know what, but the, the footage just isn't there from Thursday. But fortunately, all I do on Thursday is post the plants. So the photos, names, number, <laughs> description, all of that price of the plants on the shop. And I do that through the Shopify app on my phone. It's really easy and straightforward. So I'll add the two photos of each plant, put like the name. So example, like Cebu Blue Pothos 1, Cebu Blue Pothos 2, you know, all of that and add the description. Oh, and then when I'm finding prices, I hear there are two ways I come up with prices. A, if it's a plant I'm like not too sure about, I'll I'll go to Google, search the plant name, and then find like what the average price is. I try to go a little bit lower than what I see most listings selling for or being posted for sell, like for the amount for, you know? So like say Monstera Stanleyana Variegata, I see those going for like around $90 right now. So I try to sell mine for like 60, but that's not always the case because if it's a plant that I'm super attached to or like I don't have a lot of them in stock or they're kind of slow growing. So like it takes a lot more of my effort to get them to grow and time and space and stuff. Um, I do charge more. I price them what I feel the work, I feel that the work is worth, you know, um, or what I put into them is worth. So, you know, sometimes, most of the time they sell, but sometimes they don't. And that's like totally okay because I don't want to sell them. I don't, I would rather keep them. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like I'm so attached to them. I'd rather keep them than sell them for less than like, I feel okay letting them go probably bad. I don't know. I just, I just love my plants. So it's hard for me to not keep them all. So sometimes I price them higher. Sometimes I price them way lower. So it just kind of depends. Um, but yeah, that's all I did. But yeah, that is where we are at. And yeah, as listings sell off my shop, I just archive the individual listings. So um, you know, the shop isn't just like filled with sold out plants since we do the individual plants. So I just do that on my app. Every time I get an order, I click on the notification, go to that order and then archive the sold products, which that's pretty much it. And I will do that through the weekend. So 
I will keep you posted. I've been running around. I pulled all of our shipping supplies. So it's Sunday. <laughs> I didn't say that. It's Sunday. Um, I've been running around the house, pulled all the shipping supplies to our shipping station, which is a table set up in our living room because uh, we're fancy like that. I'm going to show you how we package to send them out on Monday. So we post new plants on Fridays. You saw that. Saturdays are just kind of a day off if there's anything like random that needs done we'll do it on saturday but there's usually not like if we need new supplies we'll go pick them up on saturday how shipping works usually ryan is here to help me but he took the baby today so i could film some videos it's super hard to film with the baby around as i'm sure you can imagine he's a chatty little dude but okay so ryan built this thing he made this thing so that we could cut our like cardboard stuff it has this thing you just take it out of the one side put the roll in place. This cardboard stuff is cut to fit perfectly in our boxes. So like the width will slide perfectly in place and like hold itself in place, if that makes sense. And we also have, um, we have two, one more size, and then we can like cut bigger rolls into smaller pieces for the other size of box we have. We don't have to use those ones very often. So yeah, and then there's just, there's a blade right here. So you just pull the paper through to the end. It's perfectly measured to fit our little cups. Um, once you line it up, let me, let me push you down a little. So once you line it up on the end here, you just rip it and this will fit perfectly around our cups. So yeah, I'm just gonna do a bunch of these so that they're all ready to go and I don't have to, I can get in a rhythm instead of having to stop to cut more like while I'm packaging. And yeah, so this should do all of it. I have a few left over from last time, but these should do all the plants in our orders today. Yeah, this is a handy little contraption that Ryan built and it's worked really, really well. Um, I feel really good about our shipping like methods. We have had a few issues here and there. I mean, that's just the way it is. Things are gonna happen like when you're shipping plants, but for the most part, I feel really, really good about our shipping methods. And then I have a towel I'm going to lay out here just so that if any of the plants have like um, damp bottoms or wet drippy moss on the bottoms, this can kind of absorb the excess moisture so it's not like getting everywhere in the box and making a mess. And I will say, I hope that seeing how we package like helps you if you wanna start a shop. Like I'm not somebody who's trying to keep keep secrets or like gatekeep or anything like that. So if you have any questions, leave them down below. I'm trying to tell you, show you everything that I think would be helpful to know in the beginning. But okay, so we do use Shopify and I have my laptop here. I'm obviously not gonna show you the order screen because I don't wanna give away the customer information, but I just go to our orders and you know, go to the first order that was placed. And then I will pick a box, write the order number on it which this one is 1345, just like that. And then I'll set that aside. Okay, and then on the screen, it shows you like what plant sold. So in this case, it's a philodendron silver stripe. And like you saw before, we number each individual cup. So this is philodendron silver stripe 20. So I'm gonna come over here to where the plants are and grab philodendron silver stripe 20, wherever she may be. Come out, come out wherever you are. Okay, so this is the plant. Philodendron silver stripe 20. It's a little cutie. Look at the roots down there. Put my plant here. I have this handy dandy little tape dispenser thing that holds a masking tape and a shipping tape, which is really nice for this. So we just go ahead and tape the tops so that the moss is held in place and the plant isn't gonna like bounce around in there during shipping, hopefully. Crap happens, you never know what's gonna happen. Post office is something else these days, you know? So we have the top taped down pretty well. Grab our little cardboard, sit the plant in there so that the bottom lines up with the bottom of the cardboard. And then tape on each side so that the plant is not going to move, hopefully. <laughs> The issue I was mentioning earlier that it seems has happened a few times is I think people were just like ripping the cup off and then the tape would get stuck on the leaf. Like obviously how we tape it, uh, it's pressed down on the cup and the cardboard. So there's no way that like it, the leaves could get stuck in that um, until the plant is like actually ripped off. I don't really know how to combat the issue of people just like pulling it off and then the tape getting stuck on the leaves and then them wanting a refund. That has happened quite a bit and it's kind of, 
frustrating, like I'll be totally honest. I don't know, we can all have our own opinions on that, right? Okay, anyway, then I make sure that the leaves are pointing up so they don't get damaged when I roll the cardboard. Oh, I'm trying to do this so that you can see, but it's kind of hard. Okay, there we go. And then I just roll it so that it, you know, is tight against the cup. And I take two pieces of packing tape and tape it shut like so, just like that, see? And it's secured in there like <laughs> the plant is not gonna move, okay. Now what we do is we take our little box, two pieces of pack, or one piece of packing paper, shove it down to the bottom, put the plant, slide the plant in, like see what I mean? It's cut perfectly so that um, it can't move around in the box so we don't really have to like tape it down, which is really nice. And then take a second sheet of packing paper. Crinkle it on top like that. And then I add our, what's it called? Little papers, our thank you card with like care tips and our social media and stuff. And then our sticker with the logo. Um, put that on top and tape it shut. And then I'll set this aside and Ryan will look up the order number on Pirate Ship, which is who we use to ship through. And, and then Ryan will look up the order number and print the shipping label and put the shipping labels on each box. That's the process. I'm just gonna set it over there so Ryan can do that later when he gets home. And I do watch movies while I do this. I'm currently watching Mrs. Doubtfire, so. <laughs>